Beach FM, locals talking to locals. And my pleasure to welcome in from the Shoreline Cinema, that well-known petrol head, Peter Edwards. Good morning and welcome to you. How good are you? morning. Good morning, John. I'm hardly a petrol head, <laughs> but yes. I'll accept well, you it should be after occasion. that movie, surely. Yeah, and a very long one it was too. Um, now, the film is Ford versus Ferrari. Um, now, I often come in and I'm explaining what the title actually means and why the film has got its title. Not this time. Have to do it on this, <laughs> exactly what it says on the tin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a petrol head's dream. Mm. Um, it's about the 1960s rivalry between Ford and Ferrari for supremacy in the endurance races, particularly the Le Mans 24-hour race. As I said, it's long. Yeah. It's two hours, 20 minutes. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Um, I didn't get out of the... It's an 8 o'clock start yesterday. I didn't get out of the cinema until pretty much quarter to 11. My goodness so, gracious <laughs> me, that's a long movie. It certainly You know is. Mr Spielberg's motto? Um, well, I don't know. But he says there's, there's an alarm clock that goes off in your posterior... 90 <laughs> minutes, and you've got to be really, really good in the movie to last after well, 90 well, minutes. Well, that I can understand, but the, but Shoreline has got some quite comfy sofas <laughs> and seats. So, so you, maybe you deaden can, down you the alarm clock. You down, can't you? <laughs> um, but as I say, two hours, 20 minutes. But it, it, in, in all honesty, it's got to be that long in order to cover all aspects of this bitter rivalry between the two giants of the motor racing world. Um, the film is directed by a guy called James Mangold, and the cast, a really superb cast, headed by Matt Damon and Christian Bale. Yep. Two Great. Well-known, mm. well-known actors, of course. Mm. Now, Matt Damon plays Carol Shelby, a well-known name in, in motor racing circles, who actually is the first American ever to win or be part of a team that won the Le Mans about five, six years before. But he's retired because he's got a heart condition. Um, and he dabbles in motorsport with a, and has a sideline in car design, which builds and builds as the film progresses. Now, amongst others, Shelby manages the English engineer and driver, a chap called Ken Miles, played by Christian Bale. And both Shelby and Miles are on sort of downward spirals in their lives and in their careers, etc., when an unexpected opportunity presents itself. Well, it's, it's 1963. Mm. Mm. Over in Detroit, Henry Ford II, played by a guy called Tracy Letts. I don't, I've not come across him before. Now, he is dissatisfied with the company's performance and its image, and he's looking out for new ideas. And he, all his execs, he said, come up with a new plan for me. Now, one of his high flyers suggests that Ford should buy out Ferrari. Now... OK, Ferrari's won four out of the previous five uh, 24-hour races at Le Mans, and yes. no doubt a, a buyout would um, improve the Ford image. Now, Henry Ford is not too keen on the idea, but he, 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 nevertheless he makes an offer to Ferrari to, to buy the company. Now, Enzo Ferrari um, refuses the offer. Um, Spectacular. Point blank. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he, he prefers to do a deal with Fiat and effectively tells Ford where he can yes. shove his offer. Um, and he, some rather unfortunate, very vitriolic, he calls Henry Ford II fat, amongst other things. And he says, well, no, look, you're not Henry Ford, you're Henry Ford II. So, yes. you know, you don't count in this, in this life, effectively. Now, this really upsets Henry Ford. And he determines to best Ferrari by defeating his cars on the Le Mans racing track, where no American car had previously won. And enter then Carroll Shelby, now the owner of this, it's quite a good business, Shelby American is his company, and his driver, who's a very hot-headed Ken Miles. Shelby and Miles get together and they design and test their first car. It's the Ford GT40 Mark I. It's quite an iconic name mm-hmm. these days. Absolutely. And it's entered in the 1964 Le Mans to be driven by Phil Hill and the Kiwi, Bruce McLaren. Yes. I mean, the car and two other Fords 
failed to complete the race, quite, failed quite dismally actually. But Shelby managed to convince Henry Ford to continue with the development programme and he says that Ferrari, Enzo Ferrari, was, was rather frightened of what the GT40 might be capable of having been timed at 218 miles an hour down the Malzahn Strait, a speed which has never, ever bef before been right. done at uh, Le Mans. Travellers that had to go around corners as well. Uh, well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> there is that to contend with. And you've got to brake, right. which is a, a continuing problem with some of the Fords. Yes. But anyway, they continued to develop the GT40, and a number of Mark II versions were entered in the 1966 Le Mans race. Now, Shelby had always wanted Ken Miles to drive one of the cars, but Miles had had a run-in with the newly appointed boss of Ford's racing division, a fellow called Leo Beeb. Um, now, Beeb really d doesn't like Ken Miles at all. He thinks he's, and the word he uses, a beatnik, mm -hmm. and he doesn't really have the right image for the Ford Motor Company. Now, that's interesting, uh, isn't it? Yes. Well, anyway, yes. Beeb instruct Shelby to exclude Miles from the racing team. Shelby appeals to Henry Ford direct and strikes a deal that if Ken Miles wins the Daytona 24-hour race, then he gets to drive one of the cars at Le Mans. Uh, and if he fails to win, then Henry Ford gets to assume ownership of Shelby American. So mm. it's quite a quite a thing really when of course Miles wins at Daytona despite some dirty tricks from Leo Beeb. Now the 1966 race at Le Mans is the stuff of legends. Ken Miles and Ferrari's Lorenzo Bandini duel throughout the race and the race is effectively over when Bandini and the last remaining Ferrari blows his engine leaving Ford in the first three places. Um, uh, Beeb orders Miles to slow down and to allow the other two Fords to close up, catch up and provide the world with a, a three-car photo finish. Uh, unfortunately for Miles, the French officials judged that the car by the New Zealanders, Chris Amon and Bruce McLaren, had completed the greater distance and they were awarded the race. Mm. Uh, uh. Now, as with many of the great motor racing legends, there is a tragic ending, but uh, Ken Miles, in this instance, led the way for Ford to dominate endurance racing for a number of years after. Now, I think all lovers of motorsport will love this film. Mm -hmm. I certainly did. Mm -hmm. But the storyline of the human drama is such that others with only a passing interest in motor racing will enjoy it also. I mean, the sequences of motor racing sequences are absolutely fabulous I mean the sound of the highly tuned engines bring back a few memories mm -hmm. and uh, you could almost smell the, the rubber it's that sort of effect that the film has on you there are some absolutely sterling performances from Matt Damon and, from, and particularly from Christian Bale play, I mean an American playing an Englishman not always the best um, but in this case I mean Ken Miles came from Birmingham. Birmingham? <laughs> and uh, he had a, a really effective Brummy accent, which he could maintain throughout the film. OK, so that's it. It's uh, Ford versus Ferrari. It's on daily at the shoreline until at least next Wednesday. And I, I would like to add just a little sort of sideline. Um, next Sunday, there's a two-hour biographical drama on prime television about Bruce McLaren. Really? Is that the be, film? Two hours? Two hours. Uh, that must be the film yeah, that it's, was made. It's ah. called a biographical drama. Yeah. So yeah. I'm suggesting it's something like a documentary, but with yeah. actors playing yes, yes. McLaren and, and, and oh. others. But Someone phoned up and talked to me about there's that. There's a schedule for the week there. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. I, I'm familiar with that story. From the way you relate it, it seems to be pretty close to the real deal. I think it may well be. Yeah. I, I yeah. certainly am going to see it. Excellent. Yes, great stuff. I mean, I was talking about Ford versus Ferrari. Oh, right, that, yeah. that seems to be pretty close to what actually happened. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think it's fairly... It, yeah, it's got to be fairly... I mean, yeah. there are going to be embellishments regardless. Yeah. 
But, yeah, it's a fairly faithful yeah. um, translation of what actually occurred. Cracking yarn, no doubt Indeed about that. it was, but Maybe a not. long one, just the same. <laughs> just be prepared, people. Taken supplies. That's Ford versus Ferrari, and, of course, it's screening at the wonderful Shoreline Cinema. Peter, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Very it's well, been a great John, pleasure. As always. Thank you, and a Merry Christmas to you and yours. Likewise. 106.3 BGFM.